Welcome to PX Mentor. Components are the building blocks of every great design system. So what are components? In simple words, components are reusable design elements. In this crash course, you'll master how to create and manage components in Figma. You'll also learn how to use component properties and variants to design smarter and faster, especially for large-scale projects. Let's dive in. Here, I've already placed a few icons that we'll need later, but first, let's create a simple button. I'm going to press T on my keyboard to select the text tool. Then I'll create a text layer and type button. Next, I'll add auto layout to it. While it's selected, I'll hit Shift A to wrap it inside an auto layout frame. Now let's give it a background. I'll add a fill color and set it to something like this. I'll adjust the padding, setting the horizontal padding to 12 while leaving the vertical padding as it is. Then let's round the corners by increasing the corner radius to 8. And just like that, our button is ready. Now imagine this, you want to use this button many times across your project. For example, if I create a few iPhone 16 frames, I can simply duplicate this button and place it inside each one. But here's the problem. What if you decide to change the label, the color, or the corner radius? If you keep them as normal layers, you'd have to edit every button one by one. That's not efficient at all. Let's rename this frame to Button. This is where components come in. With components, you make the change once and it updates everywhere automatically. Let me show you. Now, to turn it into a component, I'll head to the design panel and click on the four diamond icon, Create Component. The boundary instantly turns purple, which indicates this is now a component. Whenever you see purple in your layers list, it means you're looking at either a master component or an instance of a component. If I want to reuse this button, I can head over to the Assets panel where you'll find the component we just created. From here, I can simply drag and drop it to create an instance. While the instance has a single outlined diamond. You can also create an instance by simply duplicating the master component. Now let's test this. I'll create a few instances of this button. If I change the master component, for example, make it something pink, then all the instances update automatically. Same goes for the corner radius. If I make the master button fully rounded, all instances follow along. Even the text label can be updated from the master. This shows just how powerful components are for keeping your design system consistent and saving massive amounts of time. But what if you need to make a change to just one instance? You can do that too. As you can see, only this instance changes while the others remain linked to the master. Just keep in mind when you override a property in an instance, that property will no longer follow the master. For example, if I change the fill color on one instance, then later change the master's color, that overridden instance won't update, but other properties like corner radius will still stay linked. Finally, what if you want to completely unlink an instance from its master? Just select the instance, go to the design panel, click on more actions, and choose detach instance. You'll notice it's no longer purple. That means it's now just a normal layer and has no connection to the master. You can also right-click and choose Detach Instance the same way. And that's it. You've just learned how to create, reuse, override, and detach components in Figma. This workflow is essential for building a scalable and consistent design system. So I'm just going to hit Command-Z or Control-Z to undo the operations, like that. And let me zoom in a bit. If I select this master component and I head over to the design panel, you'll see that we have this 
Option Properties. And if I click on this plus icon, you'll see that we have four different options. We have Variant, Text, Boolean, and Instance Swap. First, select the variant, and you can see the purple rounded component activated. If you click on the plus icon, another variant is made, and you can update the button color as a hover color. Now, select the property component on the design panel and update the name to button state. This first one button will be default, and the second one will be hover. Now you can test or update the component instances as well, like I am showing you. See? You can make the default and hover button state like this. Alright, now let's move on to the next component property here. Here we have the text property as well, which allows you to modify the text of each instance dynamically. Let me show you how you can modify the label of this button. To modify the text here, what you can do is just select this label, just like that, and just change it, right? That's one way. But the better way is by creating a text property. So here, I'm going to select this component set and add a text property to it. I'm going to call it button text. And the value is done. Then create the property. Now select both variants, choose button text, and apply the property to these. Boom! Your text component property has been added. And your instance is updated automatically. Now let's move on to the next component property, which is Boolean. Well, the Boolean property allows you to define true and false values to your elements. What does it mean? Let me show you how it works. We have home icons, but they are not components yet. If you want to turn them into components, we can either select them one by one and just click on this icon, or we can just select them all and just open up this drop-down menu. And from here, we can just click Create Multiple Components, just like that. But when I do that, I don't create a specific category for our icons. If you want to create a category for your components, what you can do is change their name. All icons must have the same starting name. Always keep the prefix, material symbols, the same. Only change the ending name for each icon. And now, I'm going to select them all and just turn them into components. Okay, now if I head over to Assets here, you'll see all your components. But you can also click on this icon and just Enable Show Subfolders. In this way, you can see your component categories, for example, icons, and inside you have Send, Home, and Search. Just like that, okay. All right, now we have these components. Okay, and we can use an instance of these components inside our button component, which is called nesting components. Let's just select these two variants and paste it inside. Now all our buttons have this icon. Okay, we can just change the padding of it. We can just select our button component set and just add a boolean property here. And I'm going to name it has icon. And the value by default is true, which means that our buttons by default have an icon. Since we want to hide our icon, 
we are going to select these two icons and we are going to head over to the appearance property and just click on this icon and then I'm going to link it to has icon and now if you select one of these instances you'll see that we have this new property and it lets us hide or unhide the icon from our button it's so cool The next property we're going to discuss is called Instant Swap. So what does it do? Let's say you have this button, okay? And you want to change its icon. How can you do that? Well, to do that, you can just select this icon inside this instance. It says Swap Instance, and I can change it to Home. However, wouldn't it be better if we could just change the icon here right below all these properties? Yes, it would, right? So what we can do is select this component set and just add an instant swap property. I'm gonna name it icon. And the value is going to be icons. I wanna select one of these icons, maybe home. Let's just create this property. And then I'm going to select these icons. And right here, I'm going to click on this icon and just link this swap instance property to the icon property that we just created, like that. And now if you select any of these instances, we'll have this swap instance property as well. And we can quickly swap instances of our icons. Here I'm going to select this component set and I'm just going to click on icon. Let's say you have a library of 200 different icons, but when you create this component, you know that you want to use only 10 of those icons. In that case, you can simply add preferred values here. And then if I select any of these instances and try to change the icon, you see that here by default, I see only the preferred values I specified before. However, it doesn't mean that you cannot use all of your icons. If you want to use other icons, you can simply change it to create it in this file and go to icons. So that's basically how components work in Figma. If you liked this video, make sure to subscribe to PX Mentor for more Figma tutorials and UI UX tips. Don't forget to hit the like button and drop a comment if you found this helpful. Happy designing!